Hello, Active Sage here on the Sage channel, and as per usual on Thursday, we have an update. Now, just looking at the patch notes, you might say, well, that doesn't seem like too much, or you might actually think, well, that seems like it gives some possibilities. The truth is, this is the most technical update they have given us that doesn't require programming. They've given us some pretty damn technical updates in the f past, but they always seem to require programming. This one, if you want to set up sorting systems, you can now do so without needing to know a squat about programming. It's sort of like Tekkit, if you've ever used Tekkit in a Minecraft. Jeez, it's all these games, eh? Anyway, this is a basic setup here. I'll get to it in a minute. I'm going to go over the basics first, right over here at these two machines. Now, what the main thing this update did is added this block right here. You can see I have it highlighted right now. It is the conveyor sorter. Pretty simple name, pretty simple block at first glance, but really it's pretty advanced. Now, you can see I have a closed system here. A cargo container there, a cargo container there. If I was to go ahead and access this cargo container, and you can see it's got stuff in it, I can very easily transfer it to the other container that I've named Resh's without a number. And you can see we can transfer stuff to it. Well, thing is, I can transfer all I like back to that, but if I was to go ahead and say, let's try to transfer it back, you cannot. So the most absolute basic setup of this sorting block here is that it's basically just a one-way pipe. Now, if you go ahead and press K on it or find it in the pull down in your control panel, you're gonna see it's got an assortment of different things. So this is where I'm actually going to go up to this second system here, and we can go ahead and explain some of that. Now, the system settings for the sorting block, first thing is the filter mode, a blacklist and a whitelist. A blacklist means basically anything in the active filters list here will not be allowed to be pulled through. It'll pull, it can pull everything else through there, the way that the arrow is going, just like we did in the previously, but it will not pull anything that's listed here. And you see under that, we do have a remove button. So if there was something in there you didn't want to be in there, click the remove after selecting it. And then we also have the add new filters thing with the add button, of course. And basically what we can do here is add ammo. So any type of ammo will not be able to go through here. Any type of components, hand tools, they have these basic ones at the very top here. Or if you want to be more specific, you can scroll down and then you see they have a list of every type of item in the game even the oops you can't use the scroll mouse to go back up it goes all the way up for the whole thing but you can see they have scrap metal everything here pretty much anything that would be a component or an ore they have listed here so you can be very specific about what does or doesn't get pulled through here of course we can click this pull down click on whitelist it now switches to whitelist and now if we added any of these here that would be the only thing that can go through and we'll of course demonstrate this really quickly we'll go ahead and say only automatic rifles can go through. So we clicked automatic rifles, clicked add, and so now only automatic rifles will go through. If we wanted, we could also do only cobalt ore and explosives. So we can do add, and I did control click between those. So I selected one, control clicked another, even shift clicking works. So clicking one and doing shift. Pretty cool that they have all that in there. I just thought I'd show that because a lot of games don't have simple text functionalities like that. And it's a simple thing, but it's really cool that they actually have the, you know, control click to select multiple ones or, or click one and then shift click another to select a whole list. Pretty damn cool. Anyway, we can now go ahead and say, what is it, cobalt ore was it? It was guns, I remember that much, wasn't it? So we can go ahead and find a gun. So I did the shift 10, we're gonna get a gun real quick. So there we go, got ourselves a rifle, and I can go ahead and place that inside of here now. And you see, they're still there. And of course, going to the other one, I can now click and drag this and transfer it there. Oh wait, no, I can't. Well, that's because this one is designed to be completely automatic. And that's why we have this here, a connector and a collector. Now the connector, if we were to go into its settings, we should go ahead and set that connector to, let me go ahead and find it. There we go. There we go, connector, and we'll tell it to throw out all, and we'll actually tell it to collect all. Now, at first glance, you might think, oh God, it's going to collect everything from this container. But remember, we have this sorting block set to only allow guns and I believe what was the other thing that we said in there uh, cobalt ore to go through and so now it should automatically collect that from everywhere it can reach which is just that container and it'll only pull what it can through here so if it couldn't pull something it'll stay in the crate it'll come into here throw it out automatically instantly be collected by the collector and then transferred into this container where you can see now we have our cobalt ore and we can of course demonstrate this by tossing all sorts of other things into here and you can see they're all just going to stay sitting right there. And if we run back over to the other one, you can see they have not transferred over. It's pretty damn cool stuff. Let's also go ahead and just grab all this back. 
into my inventory. Double clicking, I, yeah, there we go. I was clicking wrong, yes. Grab all this back into my inventory. That way we can use it again for sorting. In fact, I went ahead and grabbed everything else here as well. Pretty cool stuff. And now we're gonna move on to the full system that I have set up here. Now, the idea behind this system is often when you drop off supplies for refinement, you put them in a random crate anywhere and they get pulled straight into the refinery and the arc furnaces always seem to be left out and either way, they just always get randomly flung out there. Well, this thing here is designed to, well, it's pretty much a closed system. It's completely closed, really. The only crate you ever have to access is this one right here here because pretty much everything is going to be stored in this crate and you see it's empty right now and the way this is going to work is you drop off your supplies either in that crate because it's hooked up or into this actual drop off point from this drop off point we'll follow the top line it goes up to this little bugger right here this sorting block and it's got the same little push pull thing or push thing after it so it's going to be trying to pull everything through but this little sorting block is only allowing iron cobalt and nickel ores to pass through it which are the only ones that these arc furnaces can refine so it'll pass those through it it'll get refined up and then you can see we have another pulling system here to pull it through and another block here to make sure it's not pulling the ores out and this one is just set oh yeah i've blacklisted ores so ores cannot go through this therefore this will be pulling out all the ingots and anything else this could possibly make and that'll all be piped up into this container here. The center track is pretty much the same thing where it's going ahead and pulling through all of the different ores, which I could have really just gone ahead and had the ores tag right here, but I didn't want to, of course, because I wanted those three specific ores to be going to the art furnaces. So I had to list all the ores specifically myself. And then I added scrap metal. I'm not sure if that counts on, as an ore on its own. So I added scrap metal because that will, of course, need to be re-refined. Re back into just metal plates, or I guess metal ingots. Anyway, and then we have the same throwing out system where it tries to throw out whatever it manages to collect through the sorter, and it goes up into the refinery. And then after the refinery, we have the same setup as we had just a moment ago, where only ores cannot be pulled through. Again, that's blocking ores because it's blacklisting ores. That means everything else this, thing, this machine manufactures, magnesium ore, iron ingots, all of that will be pulled right out and go straight up into this. Pretty damn cool. And so this is our main storage container. Well, from here, we have one, well, we also, I should note, we have this pipe right here, which I probably should rejig. This is designed to be a, yeah, this pipe really shouldn't be going to there. It should be, oh, turn off symmetry. This pipe should be going to right here. So this pipe is basically the overflow. So if anything gets dumped into the storage area that it's not supposed to be, this is basically the idea that it'll get flushed back. And what I mean by storage area is actually the drop-off point. So if you, let's say you were to accidentally drop your tool in there, if you were to drop anything else like that into there, this machine right here is basically saying ores and scrap metal cannot go through here, which means everything else under the sun will be sucked out through that, sent all the way down this pipe and into the main storage. Now. This storage here where all of our refined ores had just gone, this is where all of our ingots and whatever will be now stored, is directly connected into, via this pipe, into all of these assemblers. Now, as you know, when you're using assemblers in this game, if you were to pop open your UI and go to production, you basically have one assembler that's automatically chosen. And it's usually the first one that was installed. So we have assembler, I've named it main, and then we have all these other ones that I've used the control panel to go ahead and set them to cooperative mode. And so now, whenever I assign this to build something, they should all, well, whenever I assign the main one to build something, it should go ahead and have all the other ones trying to build it as well. So if you want to mass produce stuff, it should be really damn quick. Now, the thing is, oftenly, what ends up happening, I find, is that the things they're all building ends up getting stuck in their in own individual inventory. So, number assembler number eight, it might have helped you build that huge stack you wanted, but then this, it's going to keep storing some of its own stuff right here, which can be a bit annoying. Well, the way to fix that and get it all into one huge crate is also this thing right here, where I have the same thing I've shown a dozen times over now, where it's basically being told to use its sorting system, to be pulling out components, so that's only the stuff that's actually gone ahead and built. It should be, at least, I believe, if I understand what it meant by components and not ingots and whatnot. So it's going to be pulling out all the stuff it's building and piping that all the way around and into that storage container there. In fact, I should probably also have this set to not only be pulling out components, but also ammo, because you can produce those 
and hand tools because you can produce those with assemblers as well. So now when something's complete from any of these assemblers, since they're all hooked up together, this thing is going to instantly try to grab, or this thing is instantly going to try to grab whatever it can, and it's going to be limited to just those. So it's going to be pulling it out once again, just like everything else, and sending it in a terrible zigzagging pattern that I really shouldn't have done, but it's going to be sending it all the way over into this machine here. So you'll have everything under the sun stored here. Now you might be asking yourself, well, okay, what's the point of this big pipe here up top? Well, sometimes you might end up with some ore or maybe some excess ingots you got from a ship you raided or something like that. The idea behind this pipe at the top is that if you were to go ahead and drop some ingots into here, into this big machine here, it'll automatically take those ingots out and drop them into that cargo container there. That way, your assemblers will be able to access that material that's just been dropped in there. And then of course we have this other pipe here that's popping out the side and running all the way down here. That's pretty much the same exact thing as, well, it's basically saying the only things this can pull out, I believe it's blacklisted, Ooh, there we go. Uh, yeah, it's whitelisted ore and scrap metal because those are the only things that should ever be leaving this thing to go back into the system again. What I'm trying to say is basically if your whole station is hooked up at least to this crate, if you drop off ore, or scrap metal anywhere, this system right here is going to be trying to pull everything, but it'll only be able to pull those from wherever. So those, no matter where you drop them off, as long as they're hooked into that crate, will get pulled all the way back, stuck into there, and then flushed through the whole entire system again. It's pretty cool. Now, to demonstrate that, we're going to go ahead and access this crate right here. Actually, no, we can just go ahead and drop all this stuff in there. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any sort of recycling system for, if, well, actually, no, I do. I do have that pipe right there. So if stuff accidentally gets dropped in there, it should get sorted all the way through. So we're good. So let's go ahead and drop everything under the sun straight into this thing here. So I'll just start dropping stuff. And you see the little puffs of smoke at the top of the screen as it's getting collected. And now you can actually hear a few sounds over here. Yep, the machines have started up. I believe, let's see. Uh, unfortunately, the arc furnaces, it looks like, yeah, only one arc furnace is taking it in. Unfortunately, it's not separating the stacks out to their own ones or even automatically sort of sharing them. Maybe in the near or distance, who knows, future will get cooperative mode for arc furnaces as well. That would be pretty nice. Anyway, so that's going ahead and doing its business. It's going through the sorter and it's all being pumped right into this container right here. Now, what we could do is have a pipe coming out of this one with a setup such as this right here. So stuff can only come out and can only go this way. And then we could have it go through and somehow tie it back into this. I guess we'd have to go all the way to the other side of it right now. But the idea is you'd set this up so you can pull anything through it. But you have to be careful. I think this would work. Yeah, you could set this up so you can pull anything through it. But of course, nothing else would get pushed pulled out of there and stuck back in there. I don't know. It's just basically a way to easy access that I'm not quite sure about. I'd have to think about it a bit more. Okay, obvious cut right there. I did a quick test where I had the piping going from that one there all the way into here and a one-way pipe. And I thought theoretically it shouldn't be pulling anything, but of course this one here is always trying to pull through ingots. So all of the ingots ended up getting pulled all the way up into here. Not very good. But I removed that, so now, yeah, all the ingots and stuff are back in here. That was a fupa. So yeah, you cannot connect to this thing. You'd have to have a manual connect like this door on the side or go down the bottom. Woo! That was scary. Anyway, now we can go ahead and assign anything from the assembler, and it should be able to push it through. Uh, it looks like... Yes, three here. In fact, I have no idea what's happened here. It's possible that... No, I have no idea what's happened here. This should have worked. It should have spit those through because it's set to take ammo and taken all these through and plumped them into here. But for some reason, it looks like it's gone ahead and spit out a bunch of ammo and our guns out onto the ground here. Let's go ahead and do a quick test of just going and putting that back into here. It should say these don't belong yet. See right away, they vanished. So maybe this was trying to spit out too much stuff because obviously this is basically acting as a through pipe right here where it's saying everything should just go through here if it's coming straight from there and doesn't have anything to do with the assembler so if ammo gets stuck in there it should be pulling it straight through and I guess too much stuff was trying to go through at once maybe and it dropped uh, it should be over here now let's go ahead and quickly check that yep it's over here now very odd don't quite know why that happened 
Also, we can go ahead and now queue up our production. And you see, we can queue up a bunch of those to produce, and it's now cooking them all up. That was red for a second, obviously, because it didn't have the stuff. As those are produced, it should be pulled over to, yep, main storage. And you see, as it's building those up, they're being brought over here. Pretty damn cool stuff. If a bit befuddling sometimes, just be careful, you know, set your piping up cautiously. I have a lot of extra space in this system between pipes just for show. You don't really need all that. Um, yeah, in fact, you could have this block right here up right against that container and you wouldn't even hurt anything. I just like that little bit of space. Anyway, guys, that's it for this update. Sorry if it came off a bit rambly, but a few little issues I ran into here and there that required a few cuts. Anyway, guys, thanks a bunch for watching. I hope this was informative and somewhat entertaining, and I shall see you guys next time. Ta-ta!